Welcome to Frame by Frame, and uh, here we are again. Andy um, is uh, what? What are you doing, Andy? What's that light in the sky? You see it over there? Um, it's getting bigger. Oh my god! Yeah, I, I'm just. Uh, it must be a helicopter or something. It's not making any noise. Noise. That's just got my ears. Ah! Oh. oh! What's that ringing? Jeez, man! Looking on your nose. Uh, oh god! Oh my god! Oh god! You talking to me? Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? Like, who the hell are you talking? You're talking to me? I'm funny, how? I mean, funny. Like, I'm Peter Vink. We all go a little mad sometimes. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! <gasps> oh. Whoa. Oh. oh, no, my head. Is this a restaurant? Again? Oh, I'm not again. What? Um. What, what just happened, man? What? I th think we've just been abducted by aliens. What? No, no, yeah. no, no, Andy, we can't do that. We can't do it twice. We've been abducted already by Spice Girls. It's not our fault, though. We don't ask for <sighs> these things. But Mark Maron doesn't have to deal with this kind of shit. <laughs> He's got talent. <laughs> and a garage. Maybe he. Lock maybe we should just start locking our garage. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Or garage in <laughs> British. <laughs> shit, man. So where are we? What is this place? Um, It's a, it's a restaurant called the Tiramisu. No, nah, that's in Blackpool. We're in Blackpool? No. No, What's no, that horrible no. smell? Oh, sorry, mate, I got a bit scared. <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, being as we've just been abducted by aliens... How do you know we've been abducted by aliens? Well, there's aliens all around us. This is... They're is not in costume. Are you sure? Is that real? Oh, gee, oh, God. Yeah, it's, it's real. real. Okay, but... This is a restaurant. These are aliens. Andy, this doesn't make any sense. Right, there's restaurants in the second Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy novel. Right, okay. The restaurants at the, uh, at the end of the universe. I'm so glad that we're making sense of this by going through film references. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to help us. Um, well, while we're here... Well, yeah? Let's, should we talk about alien abduction films? I suppose I'll have to now. Alien abduction episodes. What? First of all, what is going to happen to us here? Um, I have absolutely not. We're probably going to... Well, it actually looks like they just want to feed us. This is actually a restaurant called Tiramisu, run by aliens. Yeah. Okay. Somewhere did you in, make the, some in the sort galaxy. Of, did you make some sort of reservation for us? No, I didn't know this was going to happen. Mm. I don't know. So, Andy, I, 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 think, I think this is suspect. Something's going on. So, okay, we better pass the time between courses, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, do you have any alien abduction films that you want to talk about? Um, why? Well, what can I think of? Is Fire in the Sky? That's an alien abduction film. It is. That is pretty much the... There's a Terminator in it. Oh, there is, yes. Yeah. A shaggy dog tail of a Terminator. Yeah, indeed. Mm, so yeah. what do you think of Fire in the Sky? Fire in the Sky. Um, it came out in 1993, I think. Yeah. Roughly, I remember it coming out on video. Just after the X Files and it exploded. I was extremely excited when this first came out on video. Um, to rent. Yeah. Oh, do you remember those days? <laughs> video rental. We had a video rental store down in the village, yeah. and uh, we used to just go there. And um, yeah, it was just basically somebody's house with a shop underneath. It was weird. They don't do that anymore. No, we um, had a similar one. Corporate I, greed. I always smelled strange. 
Yeah. There was something yeah. seedy about uh, a video store. I don't know why. Maybe it yeah. was maybe it was the back door one that my dad took me to to get yeah, it, to yeah. get a fill of porn. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody was kind of running to the cinema to watch Fifty Shades of Grey, and well, oh. and you know, I think I think we should tell them about films like Crash, yeah, nineteen ninety, you know, Cronenberg, and all these horrible Secretary, films. The Secretary, and um, the the Spanish film. No, sorry, the Serbian film. I think the Spanish film. The was Spanish film. <laughs> but they go. Yeah, very different. Than the Serbian but, film. But Fire in the Sky was was uh, a film I was really looking forward to, yeah. and saying you know back I'm going to say back in the day mm-hmm. it, <laughs> that expression um, it seemed like a really affable good, uh, a good film about alien abduction theory right okay but but, I, I've watched it recently it seems a coincidence that I've watched quite a few alien abduction films and then we get abducted by aliens and this seems. is why I'm suspicious aren't yeah, they? it's straight maybe they've been keeping track on what I've been watching yeah, and yeah. thought we need to take him. And you th- for a meal, <laughs> for, for a meal, <laughs> the galaxy somewhere. Yeah, but yeah, I recently watched it. Yeah, and it was very daytime TV, Hallmarky, very. <laughs> Imagine Hallmark, <laughs> really? The Just the acting is what yeah. I mean by it. Yeah. Obviously, you wouldn't get a Hallmark alien abduction. Well, maybe you would. I don't know. Yeah, from what I remember, it was a very hammy script. Yeah, um, even though, like I say, I was thirteen years old when I came out, and I all I was. When you came out. What, when, <laughs> when the film came out? Oh, right. I'm well, happily married with a child. Doesn't mean anything cats. these days. No. <laughs> Michael Barrymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, it was um, it was a hammy script. Um, but back in the day, it was all about the, the alien abduction scenes. And I think that's pretty exactly what the filmmakers had in mind. They didn't care what was wrapped around it. They just wanted to get to the, to the meat and potatoes. Yeah. And I wonder if they actually do serve meat and potatoes here. I'm not looking forward to what I'm going to see on my plate. Don't judge. Okay, alien you cuisine. You don't know. It could be. They, you know what? What they like for messing with cows. Yeah. There's probably. I think it's just steak here, it's isn't probably it? Probably what it is. Yeah. I didn't really think about that. But um, yeah. Um, the acting. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, actors are, you, you, people are very quick to kind of blame the acting. It was like, oh, the acting in this movie was terrible. Is your name Gregory Thomas Hayes? Yes. But what if it was actually the direction and the script that's, that's supporting yeah. them? Maybe they are actually good enough. The actors don't seem to be invested into the film. Yes, but then was anybody invested in those kind of supernatural films back in the 90s, early 90s? I mean, name a Stephen King film like Langoliers and tell me that they were invested. No, yeah, yeah, they're all very similar. Kind of just shallow. It's always on the surface. They're not quite But sure. isn't it the director's job to get the actors invested in it? I think so, but I think that I think that if you're looking at the era of these types of films, I mean, there, there wasn't a lot of groundbreaking supernatural sci-fi mm. around at that time. I mean, it was... Um, I think it was a little bit tired, maybe. The genre was very tired. Um, of course, it, it with the X Files exploding around that time, though, you'd think that people that were, this is the time to really start hitting it. Yeah, maybe maybe they were kind of just dragging their heels a bit with this one, and it was just one of those unfortunately one of those things. They just missed the whole X Files boat. Mm. Um, although Chris Carter certainly didn't, because he he saw um, Robert Patrick's performance. Maybe he saw him and just thought, well, he, he needs work. Um, we'll put him in. Um, yeah, but it's a good eight years before Robert Patrick started the X Files. You know, in the X Files was like two thousand, wasn't it? So, yeah, so yeah. It was a long so there must have been after. a few other films that they must have, uh, you know, seen. Hello, vacuum cleaner. Oh, alien doing a bit of vacuuming there. Yeah, I guess it's just one of those strange alien type things that goes on in these types of restaurants. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> just, <laughs> what are they vacuuming? Um. What are those fluffy things in Star Trek called? Tribbles. Tribbles and vacuum up tribbles. <laughs> it's, it's exhausting being abducted by aliens. It is, it is. I, I, I didn't we're... put it into my day at all. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't plan for this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, because obviously the X-Files is basically it's based on an abduction, isn't it? Uh, Mulder's sister, Samantha. Yeah. 
gets abducted, and that's his. It's in the background of of, of pretty much everything that that happens in the X Files. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it, uh, and it, triples. And triples. <laughs> um, we have triplets in our house. The cats have little uh, fluffy balls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they they uh, took off um, our rugs. You know these rugs that had balls on them. Right. <laughs> Right, so far you've come out, we've talked about meeting two veg in our balls. <laughs> oh my god. The rest of it, is, it must be an implant in your nose that's making you do this. The, it was badly written. Yes. I gotta say, Fire in the Sky was, was badly written. Um, uh, it based on alleged true yeah. events. Tr- Have you ever read the Fire in the Sky book? No, but Travis Walton, um, he's talked about it enough in various interviews, and right. you, you can't help but just listen to the same story over and over again. You think, oh, do I have to watch that? See, because I kind of remember. Um, re- I'm not sure if it's Fire in the Sky. I'm sure that I can't. I can't be sure if it was that book, but I, I thought it was when I was reading it. Yeah, that makes any sense. It was yeah. a long, long time ago, and it was about they were driving, and there was literally something in the sky. It was following them as they were driving, uh-huh. and I just remember. Um, the book scaring me mm. that night I um, I was freaked out you know what I mean and I expecting at any minute to be abducted by an alien really yeah mm. I was a as a, as a kid impressionist was a, was a, yeah I was a little bit I was an impressionist <laughs> you were <laughs> you were very impressionable I should have mailed it to the Marx Brothers <laughs> You were very imp- imp- impressionable, young lad. Yeah, yeah I yeah, think it yeah. was. That's it. Yeah. But it's sort of said on the subject. I'm going, to, I'm going to talk about it. When I was, I used to be in the Cubs when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, one night we all went to sleep. Yes. We woke up the following morning and we'd all exchanged places. So say the guy who was sleeping opposite me was now in my bed and he was where I was. Okay. It was like a mirror image of where we'd all slept. Really? Yeah. We'd all woke up, because you slept with your head on a on a rucksack. Yeah, yeah. And we all woke up with our heads on the wrong rucksack. All of us. But it was like the mirror image of we'd all gone to sleep. That's odd. That's, that's very odd. Yeah. That, that's Because you, your imagination can play with you then and start thinking, you know, wait a second. I mean, were you taken and then and put that's back? that's the thing, you know what I mean? But, you, you know... The reality of it is, is probably... You know, the scout leader might have moved us all for a, a, a laugh, but it would have been very difficult to I mean, do. Yeah, but you don't I mean you can do it with babies, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sleeping babies, you might be able to get away with it. But how old were you, like 12, 13? No, I don't think I was younger than that. I was probably about eight, maybe. Okay, so a scout leader went in and started going one by one to every single eight year old's bed. Yeah. That doesn't sound right. Moving us. Moving you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm surprised that uh, there isn't other traumas that you could be enduring right there. But uh... <laughs> Just a worth note, though, it was a strange thing. It was just an odd thing, yeah. Yeah, and it was around then where I was obviously getting a, a fascination with sci-fi yeah. and alien and stuff. And I remember just thinking, were we abducted? And we were all talking about it. And yeah. the, the forest that we were all staying in was supposedly haunted as well, so we weren't sleeping. Heavily. Is, this was back in like 1986-87 so there weren't really that I mean the Close Encounters of the Third Kind probably would have been your strongest reference at an ET maybe yeah because um, that's it yeah because once I started watching alien abduction films I retrospectively thought back of that I thought yeah, yeah, hang yeah. on yeah exactly um, yeah because it didn't seem to be that there were that many films about alien abduction no um, the documentaries yes yeah, I mean, yeah. every, every single channel on this planet has turned out some kind of a UFO alien abduction Betty 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 and Bob story you know yeah. and, but a lot of these films are always based on true stories it's uh, based but then it's based on somebody's account of a story that, what's your views on yeah. alien abduction then? let's talk about that well considering our circumstances right now yeah um, I put, take this out uh, say this never happened okay as being abducted by aliens what would you have thought say okay. an hour ago what would have been your views on alien abduction well two two, two, two parts of, of this you know there's the first part that I do not think that we're alone in the universe 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that, that's that's for certain. But uh, you know, human arrogance would assume that we would be the center of the universe, and, and uh, unfortunately, we, we keep on proving ourselves wrong every step of the way. Um, whether we're in reach of another race, I don't know that. Um, whether I think that people are actually seeing UFOs and being abducted by aliens, I seriously doubt it. My theory is is that if there are aliens here, I'm sure that they would be advanced enough to have figured out how to not let us remember, yeah. first of all. And second of all, they wouldn't be seen. They would not be flying around in, in, in you know broad daylight or in, or even at night with light shining down on cattle. You know, I, I seriously think that uh, that if there are anything, if there is anything out there, that nobody will actually have a clue about the the truth of what's but out there. We've seen countless videos though of things like yeah. there's that famous one where there's like it looks like there's a craft approaching the Earth. It's like a satellite. They see a flash come from the Earth, and all of a sudden the craft just darts off in the opposite direction. Then a missile comes out of the planet, or what could perceive to be a missile. Yeah, what's all that about? I don't know. I'm getting interference on my so headset. So I am gonna. Yeah, the aliens. Must be the aliens. I'm, I'm happy with that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, what was that? Um, do you want a coffee? Coffee? Really? Coffee? Yes. Really? Are you sure? Yeah. You sure it's gonna be coffee? Yeah, we just said coffee. I'll have a coffee, no sugar, don't you? Uh, do you have sugar? Yeah, yeah, sugar. Sure, sure. Okay, sugar. Yes. Two. Two. Two, none for me, thanks. Oh my god. So, um. I'm not drinking that. You'll offend them, they might okay. suck your brains out. Alright, so, right, so go back to Fire in the Sky then. So, the, the, the scenes that matter are the <coughs> abduction scenes. Yeah, it's and they like are it. the only parts that are done well. Really. Yeah, they are. I mean, that, that, I think that's probably where all the production value went in. Mm. I mean, I, I'm sure that they they sold the idea uh, based on that whole sequence. Yeah. The production the pr production company would have said, you know, you you give me that, you give me an alien abduction experience, you can have your movie. And I think that's probably what everybody was sold on. But I I just think that they just didn't have enough to to fill it around the edges right yeah really the alien abduction sequences were okay but we've seen the thing is we've seen so much since then that are either better or done differently yeah and um, the sort of the violence of it yeah, yeah. I don't think it would if, again it wouldn't I don't feel it would be like that I'm hoping not well in this situation yes I can tell yeah. you yeah yeah, let's hope it's not like that. But, yeah, I, I, I see what you mean. I mean, it, it just seems to be that the one thing that people gravitate towards is the idea that you will... I mean, everybody makes a joke about anal probes. Yeah. And it seems to be the thing that rolls off everybody's tongue. Yeah, I mean, that's just one of those things that people just associate with aliens. Yeah. And the whole image of an alien. But that's, that's the problem. This is why I have a problem with people remembering the same different you know, same images of aliens and drawing the same images of, images of aliens it's so ingrained in our culture mm. that you you just basically adding to a, a pile you're adding to a stockpile of, of the same thing but the aliens have been talked about for thousands of years yeah and there this are is the some... thing isn't it so you've got like ancient yeah. hieroglyphs that speak of like yeah a fiery chariot coming over the ocean and landing and stuff exactly and you've got those, those so, religious paintings of, of, of lights and skies and, and, and different yeah because there is an actual there's a tapestry isn't there and behind a woman's head you can see like a little ship in the sky yeah so have we been visited and it's been happening for thousands of years and it's only now where uh, they have to be more clandestine because of our technology. Possibly. Our I paranoia. Mean, um, but then I, th I think that if we went to an alien planet, we as ourselves, in our current state of emotional growth <laughs> and state of intelligence, we would be so fucking covert. Excuse my French. We would yeah. be so covert. We would we would not drink we, we'd have that duck blind mentality where we would find the best way to actually go unseen yeah take that intelligence 
to a, a slightly higher... It doesn't have to be ultrasonic levels of, of intelligence, but take it to a, a slightly higher degree of humanity. They Surely they wouldn't be making that mistake. Maybe, maybe not. I, I can't imagine that these are just stupid little goofball aliens just joyriding around our planet for the hell of it. And, and I mean, but who knows? But then by now we would have actually had one to talk to. We would have had something would have happened by now yeah. that would have actually. I mean, Ro- Roswell is just. I, th- I think it's because of the hype. Everybody talks about Roswell, and I can't believe I just brought it up. But Roswell is the only thing that you can talk about apparently when it comes to alien abductions and uh, visitors, visitors from other planets. Yeah. So, yeah, I kind of just feel very, and we're going to be talking about uh, this in more depth, of course, when we when we talk about because I, I think I think it will be good for us to talk about the documentaries. It's just it's something I'm, I always find very interesting. Mm. It fascinates me as yeah. well. Even if it's just a, a condition that people have, uh, yeah. that they feel they've been abducted, the whole, the whole idea of an anal, anal probe is very... Abstract, in a way. Yeah, it's you know, really, it's like... Um, it's just an idea. Something, something awful happened, and but there's this no is reason my way of it. dealing with it. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah. And, but there's uh, no reason for an anal probe to actually... Because uh, you know, people mention being probed, but they never actually say what, why, how... Who they just mentioned that part? And if you've got an advanced race, the thing, what can I stick a probe that you know it'll stay there and not come out? Up your poop chute is not the correct place. No, because you, you'll be pushing it out sooner or later. Doesn't really make sense. Exactly. Yeah. Unless it is the uh, the route to all, um, you know, every road goes to Rome. <laughs> it just so happens that that's you know Rome's up your ass. <laughs> it's right there up your ass. But yeah, it, it, it troubles me because <clears throat> like with ghosts, you get so many people who um, exploit it. Yeah. And for my money, I've kind of, um, yeah, I think there's just too many things to look at now that, that it just it just becomes overwhelming and it's like, well, there's nothing we can do about it. They even tried to do a, a TV show where they had, you know, with, like with the ghost hunters, they tried to do UFO hunters. Yeah. And I'm like, well, what are you going to do? Just... <clears throat> You just some sit up in a field and wait yeah um you know wait for someone to come down and say hi um you right i'll do gonna it. admit to something now okay i did that once you actually stayed out overnight i got there's a group called tame side paranormal they're not around anymore i am um, they got in touch with me so i thought oh, i'll come around to a few meetings and it was discussing mm-hmm. about haunted houses things like that i just added my 10 pence in and they were doing a night where they were going to a, a ufo hotspot what I, that concept yeah. is alien to me, hey. but um, I went along anyway, and it was just that. It was six, excuse me, six hours of just looking up at the sky, and, and there might have been a in. shooting star, maybe, or was it just not not clear? I would think it was clear. It was a clear night. I'm not sure if we even saw a shooting star, but it was that. It was it was just that. No one talked. It was just looking up, and then did you hear that? It was a UFO, you're not going to hear anything, mate. You know, and it was a bizarre yeah. night. I'm glad I did it. It was an experience, but it was a bizarre night. Yeah, that's taking the whole ghost hunt, ghost hunt and putting it into the context of a UFO hunt. Like, that's exactly. You what can't it is. do. They're, they're two different things. But yeah, it just it just they're just two different things, and keep it separate. You know, uh, but unfortunately, people kind of group the two 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 entities together. Excuse the. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, yeah, Fire in the Sky. It, it, it's it's an okay film, but it's not really. I mean, uh, uh, for some reason, these films that were being made didn't really kind of hit the mark. Yeah, with... I think one that did hit the mark was uh, Communion. Yes.
wasn't a dream. There's a group that meets. A group? People who've seen the same sort of things you have. Which group of aliens abducted you? Bob, we are not victims. We are participants. I don't recall them being human. a little bit earlier than uh, Fire in the Sky that was a precursor oh was it right. yeah I think it was was it 1989 1990 I yeah. don't have internet in this alien restaurant called Tiramisu I can't believe you don't have Wi-Fi here um, but <coughs> incidentally by the way Tiramisu means take me up really it's Italian for take me up yeah it's to lift, lift me up to a higher place but I, I, I can see <coughs> why they named it Tiramisu yeah that so makes, makes sense that's yeah. quite good it's really good they know Italian they know Italian. They probably know everything. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So communion was ba- also based on somebody's book. Yeah. Well, what I liked about this is they, w- they didn't try to make the aliens look real. No, they didn't. They the obviously... line between it being fake and real is you know is if this is just something he's imagined or is it something that actually happened? Yeah, exactly. It's prominent all the way through the film. Exactly, and it, it it was not very organic um, no. aliens. They were just very, very almost const- uh, man-made construct. Yeah, which is perfect because that's what he is. I mean, he's a he's a writer, isn't he? The guy. He is, yeah. Um, is he a journalistic writer or a fiction writer? He was a fiction writer, and that's why he was kind of going into himself, doing his thing. Yeah, you know, he had these scenes where he's really. I mean, that's Christopher Walken, though. Um, I can imagine that the director had no control over him throughout that film. It seems to be endless scenes of him just improvising. Yeah, definitely. And then all of a sudden he just gets told to, okay, Chris, can you just come in and start reading the script? Yeah, so but, he, <laughs> I, yeah but I love those scenes where yeah. he's having a party with the aliens. And... Yes, exactly, because it's so Lynch. Yeah, It's it so, um, you know, and you kind of just enjoy spending time with Christopher Walken. You don't care. Yeah. It's just fun to watch him just do his thing. Yeah, and there was, there was a few little shot moments, either the three, I think... You, we discussed it. Yeah, when head just comes at him. Yes. And you're expecting it. Yeah, I remember getting a few chills when I saw that for the first time. Yeah, I think I think the whole alien peering around the door thing was was quite chilling at the yeah, time. And, absolutely. Because uh, it, yeah, it's it. But they went into it pretty fast. They didn't wait. There was really not a lot of time spent kind of just finessing the characters. Mm. They they just went to the went to the cabin in the woods. Yeah, your favorite thing. Kevin in the freaking woods, and um, they went with that weird guy. They were, they looked like a creative oh. bunch of, of of professionals. They weren't exactly uh, you know quite quite older people just going for a big gathering together. It yeah. almost could be construed as a as a kind of a a strange. The thing they always do in these films is the floodlight always switches on outside, yeah. and we we've kind of. <clears throat> played with that in our own writing yeah by yeah. actually just going on the nose and just having a floodlight yeah <laughs> but I mean and, and it's another thing away. yeah exactly yeah. but this is, it's just another thing like if the technology is that advanced to let's just steal someone out of a house and wipe all the memory and put them back why Why are we switching the floodlight on why exactly exactly that I just get an idea just like this alien who's got all this brilliant <laughs> brilliant technology called Kev it's like it's really creeping in. It's like, can you switch the floodlight on again? Oh shit! It's every damn time. I know. Why do we have to pick houses with floodlights? Kev, just get the get the guy out there. Come back, and we can go back into the Milky Way for a night. Stop complaining. Stop switching the floodlight on. All right, Kev. All right, all right. You know, that'd be funny. Exactly. I'm gonna write that. Okay, Kevin. Kevin the alien. Kev who, the alien. Kev the alien who accidentally accidentally flies across cities without realizing that he's yeah, got yeah, his yeah. lights on and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he's probably just in one alien who keeps getting caught. <laughs> it's the same fucking alien. Kev. Kev the alien is just everywhere. Um, yeah. You know, wait, why not? Let's just do that. Let's, that's our theory. It's Kevin. 
Yeah, Kev the alien. Kev the alien, and he's just really stupid. Yeah. <laughs> he just hasn't got a clue. Um, and, yeah, it, sometimes he brings his friends, his goofball friends, and uh, for band practice. <laughs> and that's why sometimes you see streaks of six yeah. or eight. Because, you know, like sea lions, right? Yeah. Bear with me on this. Whoever found out the sea lions are good with balls, right? They're brilliant with balls, aren't they? Yeah. But right. you never see one sea lion that's really crap with a ball. He's like, kicks them over to me. Miss, oh, sorry, it's not my thing. He's trying to, you know, he's bumbling around. Maybe. True. So, true. So maybe Kev the alien is just the, the one bad sea lion. Is this your 5%? Is it? I, I think that's really good. That's really freaking hell. He's just, yeah, he's just that one alien who's just bad at everything. Bad at, bad, just bad at abducting you know, yeah. he's lousy at it he just drops people <laughs> Kev why are you sticking things up his ass? we don't need to do that yeah but I'm putting a probe up there he's just going to shit it out no trust me it'll work this yeah, it's, it's old school <laughs> it's oh, oh it's an old wives tale that you're not supposed to use yeah, yeah. we've not done that since Jesus was around here <laughs> you mean Alexandria oh yeah <laughs> he doesn't like that name no he doesn't Oh, reference to the Billy Myers case. You see, yeah, we're, we're, we're very, we're very uh, into uh, aliens and abductions and, and things like that, and not UFOs. But, mm. uh, but like, like I say, I'm always on the fence do you because remember, they always just forget. To but me. actually, going back to communion, do you remember the anal probe bit in that? Oh, because it was all jokey, and he stood, he sat there, butt naked, isn't he, Christopher Walken? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And no, then it sort of comes up to him, and then just you, yeah, you don't see it obviously, but it implies what you've done, and it. it switches then he's like how dare you how dare you you know and all of a sudden this sort of fun light dream sequence he's having it suddenly just turned really dark that's it yeah it was when the, at the party isn't it yeah I think and so, at the yeah. end of the party and all of a sudden some, that guy comes in who looks just like him yeah and uh, starts doing magic <laughs> I just, I just think it's bizarre because it's just so not what you expect from a. I mean, if that, if that was your alien abduction story, and I, and I doubt that it was. I don't think that this guy wrote that. I, mm. I think he had. He did say that he thought that Christopher Walken went a little bit batshit crazy with it, with his characterization. Right. And uh, Christopher Walken replied to him like, "Well, if the shoe fits." <laughs> That's the worst Christopher Walken impression ever. Hey, have if you, the shoe fits. Have you heard Bradley Cooper's Christopher Walken? No, but... It's amazing. He, he's an amazing guy, too, by the way. I mean, he's like the most authentic guy. You, I mean, he is what you think he is, which is right. a different thing for a lot of people. But, right, right. But one, one, one particular thing was... Uh, I was very intimidated by him, too, by the way. Because um, he's, not, he's not the normal guy who's like, Hey, how you doing? It's not like that. He just sort of sits there in the makeup trail, and he's like... Pineapple. <laughs> I like to eat it. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I can't get it. Yeah, everybody's gonna walk in. Everybody's gonna walk in. Yeah, it's a very good <laughs> one. Yeah. Oh. And he does love pineapple, yeah. And he had this dancing scene, God help me for saying this, but he had this dancing scene with Rachel McAdams. In the movie, our, yeah, in the, yeah. In the movie. It was our first, it was my first day, his first day, and uh, and it just looked beautiful on the monitor. And she came up to me afterwards, just, God, that, you're dancing with Christopher Walken because Penny's in heaven, from heaven, right, you know, right. he's a great uh, dancer. She said, he keeps saying fart. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's just to keep it light, you know what I mean? He's like, fart. <laughs> <laughs> and she was dancing. That's the most cra that's the craziest thing I've ever heard, and I've heard it all. And if you look at the monitor, he's just her dancing. She's like, "Fart, I'm farting." It's so beautiful. <laughs> Very strange. Yeah. But the thing is, this this film um, also Communion also started his dancing career with Fat Boy Slim, Weapons of Choice. There's a whole scene of him just dancing around. Yeah. And I just made me, made me think, this is why Fat Boy Slim wanted him for the Weapons of Choice video, which is by far. My favorite music video ever. Yeah, it's ever. brilliant. I love it, and it, it's just Christopher Walk. I mean, I mean, any anything he's in, I it enjoy. Is. He's 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 not safe to me. He's not one of those people who, when I see on the screen, I feel safe. Mm. But I feel warm and fuzzy instead. I don't know why. Yeah, it's not safe. It's excitement, isn't it? It's, it's think, what's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? He's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna talk about putting a. I have this watch up my ass the whole time. I mean, come <laughs> on. He's, um, um, have you seen him in Annie Hall? Hobby. Hi, Dwayne. How's it going? This is my room. Oh, yeah. It's terrific. <clears throat> Can I confess something? Mm -hmm. 
I tell you this because, as an artist, I think you'll understand. Sometimes, when I'm driving on the road at night, I see two headlights coming toward me. Fast, I have this sudden impulse to turn the wheel quickly, head on into the oncoming car. I can anticipate the explosion, the sound of shattering glass, the flames rising out of the flowing gasoline. <clears throat> right. Well, I have, to, I have to go now, Dwayne, because I, I'm due back on the planet Earth. Right, so now just think, just to drive right into the headlights. And then he says, next scene, he's, he's, the he's driving him home, and he's like, <laughs> shit, that fucking scene is so mental. I love it. But then, is it King of New York? I have not seen that film. But he's very, he's very brilliant, he's very good he in it. Dark he's, he's dark and tame, yeah, I don't yeah. know, he can pull it back when he has to. He's well, just... Prophecy was dark as well. It I mean, was, this yeah. was around about the same time as Fire in the Sky, Prophecy, and all these kind of mm. um, dark... Kind of one to, uh, King of, what was it called? King, King of New York. New York yeah. Wasn't that around about the same time? I think it could have been, you know. Is it, uh, I, I just Obviously, he's in The Deer Hunter, and he's incredible in that. Uh, the, the, the Deer Hunter is not, not the, the Deer but The Deer <laughs> is probably one of the most uh, heartbreaking films oh, yeah, yeah. that I, I ever watched. I've never, ever sobbed through credits so hard in my life. Mm. Um, and I tell you what, if you if you get the DVD and you listen to Mike Mike Cimino, um doing his commentary, yeah, throughout the whole, he's welling up the whole way through, and you can you you just you just breaking with him, it's heartbreaking. Oh. That film, there's not there's nothing you can do with that film but just be totally in love with, wishing wishing those people well and just wanting them to be such a cool group of guys. Yeah. That, that that pub scene where they're singing Frankie Valley. Yeah. Oh man, I did, didn't you just want to be there? I did. I'm glad I wasn't though. To <laughs> have been I would have done well swallowed. in that. <laughs> well, that, well, that's another story. That's another podcast. Yeah. Um, I'd love to to do that with you sometime. But uh, yeah, how well would you do in them? Um, would you do better than Alien? Abortion? I think I'd probably end up going the Christopher Walken way and just lost it. Yeah, just yeah. totally lost it. I think I'll be the, I'll go in the Stephen uh, the, the Stephen route and just lose my legs. Yeah, I think I would have been in a wheelchair. I and then you would have milked it, wouldn't you? Um, oh, Stephen with no legs, he's yeah. back again. We have to feel sorry. For I want him. to write. It's all about my, my yeah. It's all about the writing. Then I've got hands left. Yeah, and that's it. I'd, I'd be such a bad vet. I'd be fucking terrible. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm good with animals. What? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, aliens. <laughs> Something else that got out <laughs> before we in, uh, insult the entire um, fifty-plus age group of, of our demographic in America. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh no, we were just you know. We just, oh, we just love just those joking. GIs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, I like communion. I think it's a it's a good effort. It is a good effort. Um, my only problem with it I, again is is I, I didn't I I didn't like the Jim Henson. Um, you know, if if I uh, want yeah, the small troll like yeah, aliens. that's my, uh, the only thing that kind of threw me out the movie. But the fact that Christopher Walken went over and just gave him a big snark was kind of like a yeah. You know, to me that made me think. Yeah, he doesn't even take them seriously. Yeah, um, I'm happy with that. That's another thing I have. If you've got another race that's evolved on another planet, yeah, with different gravity, gravity, different biology, whatever it might be, it could be an arsenic-based life form. We don't know. And it would, they all look sort of human like, yes. but they wouldn't. It would be something that you couldn't even you couldn't but, anthropomorphize human figures. And yeah, they just wouldn't be if they've evolved in a completely different area. They could look like a sponge. Yeah, or they'd look like a, a door mixed with a rat. Well, you know, it'd just be something that you couldn't even possibly imagine. It could look like Dudley Moore. It could look like Dudley Moore. Yeah, but that's that's not, that's the one thing that everybody kind of is touching upon now. That's why, so ever since Starship Troopers, maybe yeah. that aliens have kind of been uh, uh, kind of just this insect like, and they've gone, they've basically pushed towards insects. Mm. Even though I still think that's the wrong way to go, you know, there, there's got to be some sort of um, middle ground somewhere. But does it? But people are only using their imagination. This this isn't based on what is possibly out there. Yeah. Um, there is the uh, distant origin theory, 
which is the uh, the idea that human seed has been spread around the universe. Yeah. And that kind of that that my seed has. <laughs> everywhere. But uh, unfortunately, they didn't think about that until forty years into Star Trek. So, uh, right. you know, because I think every single episode was was some sort of a, a costume of some kind. Yeah. That apart from one episode in Star Trek, the original series, where they actually did have a, a big hunk, husk of, of of animal that they did communicate with, right. and even flying pizzas at one time that attached to you. Mm. Um, so they did try, but the thing is. Uh, TV has always been on a budget, so the majority of the aliens you're going to recognise are humanoid because that's what they had to work with. Yeah, and then there's within like ufology circles, they do believe a lot of them believe that we were a part of a. We were from them. They sort of created our race thousands and thousands of years ago as a sort of experiment. So we're sort of based on them, but we've evolved differently because of our circumstances. So we don't look like them now. Yeah, so I like that idea. Yeah. I like the idea that that we are here because of. I mean, that that previously this planet has been inhabited many times before yeah, by yeah, different absolutely. alien species, and that it's actually that we're actually high, we're actually renting this space. Yeah, there's a great Graham Hancock book I think called Chariots of the Gods. I think it's that one which mm-hmm. hypothesizes that there was very um, technologically advanced races thousands of years ago. Yeah, you know, tens of thousands of years ago. That got wiped out, and then we sort of evolved from that, you know. And I think that there's a there's a race of aliens that are, are responsible for cleanup crew, because they did a bloody good job of getting rid of as, as much evidence as they could. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think that uh, you know sometimes when you have uh, rental schemes where the, the tenants leave and, and they leave everything behind and it's a complete mess, and they don't have time to move somebody in. Yeah. And they come in and they kind of notice a few flaws. I think that was our race that came in after after the last race that the maybe but, the Egyptians yeah. or well, that there are there are certain things that have been left behind as to say well you know why is that there? Because we talk about the pyramids, we couldn't build the pyramids now. We don't have a crane strong enough to lift that top slab onto the top of the pyramids now. So who did that? Yeah, a few people with a few winches. I don't think so. Did, didn't they have like a, a pyramid growing plant thing that just grew the <laughs> wasn't it grown I don't know but maybe I mean they say that there is also a ro- water erosion involved and that maybe maybe they actually had huge tanks surrounding the building and they basically filled the tank up for every level while they were building it so that they could float <laughs> wild as it may wow. seem <laughs> So they could float those last, last pointing, pointy bits. Well, yeah. If you just think for a second, what if... Because our species were yeah. very hunter-gathering, and then uh, over the space, very quickly, the space of a few hundred years, we just jumped. Yeah. Like, you know, we, we've got our technology, you know, as what we could do. As the a, short amount of time that we've actually been uh, from, yeah, like you say, from the moment that we were um, hunter-gatherers. Yeah. Then we're living in huts, Iron Age, and further and further afield, we're just suddenly doing all this incredible stuff. Mm. What if? What if we were helped along by something, and that's where all those stories have come from? That's, uh, yeah, that's deep, man. Yeah. yeah. I read a book called The Manor Machine. Uh huh. Um, in the Bible, they talk about um, that God had given manna, which is what they all ate as a food, and said, that's fine, you can always eat that. But the moment you start to eat animals and vegetation again, I'll take that away from you. But this was food. And this book sort of hypothesized that that was actually a machine that was brought by an alien civilization. Say, so you eat this, and that's fine. Don't don't use your don't resources. Animals, yeah. But the moment you took your resources, we'll take it away. And it sort of mirrors it in the Bible, where they're using it for so long, and then it's just taken away when they start to you know, eat animals and stuff again. Okay. It's an interesting book. Yeah, that sounds something that could, you know... Who knows? But any, yeah, yeah. So I, just, I, I love conjecture and theory. And, yeah. And, and, and then the abduction of humans is just to see how we're evolving. What we're, you know, yeah. Like, well, that, like we would do with a gerbil. But that's the most typical reason. That's the most, lo- well, the most logical reason that we can think of hmm. um, as, to, as to why they're picking... 
Um, but I, I do sometimes question their uh, selectiveness. Yeah, uh, I was just about to say because that, it yeah. seems as though that um, the, the people who they tend to take are are incredibly codependent, withdrawn introvert yeah. type people who who seem to need something, which is a good cover to be honest. I mean, if they if they picked people who were professionals, then people would be believing them more. Why take? Why not take a broke a, a fallen angel? <laughs> somebody who who people will just say oh he's just making it up because he's a down person who, who needs to make attention for themselves yeah. so you know there is precedent to say that that's actually a really good idea to choose those people but at the same time I just think you know we're not going to get much of a, of and a they, range yeah. of, of and they tend to be well I didn't know why I weren't supposed to play you know, golf in a thunderstorm so I was playing some golf and I get abducted by those aliens and they stick a probe up my butt yeah <laughs> They they all sound just like that. Yeah. No. <laughs> but then no. Yeah. Yeah. But you get the the the, the nervous ones, and I was a, a, I was just abducted by these gray gray beings, and and then they they took me in, and then that I I had I, I gave birth to a, a child there, and and I, I keep on I, they keep on taking me. So, and they keep on showing me the development of my child who is now 22 years old I was abducted four years ago and uh, I was there I saw that baby <laughs> I saw it grow on my own two eyes in my eyes in my eyes I saw that baby grow <laughs> so yeah I mean there's, there's different characterizations that we could do a whole episode yeah. of different characters <laughs> Um, I like my UFO guy. But I'm then, him. <laughs> but then it, it amazes me because you know they always uh, documentaries that really desperately want people to believe, and I think a lot of them do. A lot of people, uh, that, like you say, the Billy Myers documentaries, uh, people tend to kind of help him along with his the feeding him, the feeding him, yeah. feeding and and kind of feeding the idea of it that it's true, mm. and um, you you kind of see that in so many documentaries simply because they always go for somebody who has the highest possible credibility to, as 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 kind of like their, their guide to yeah. to the belief system it's like he's he's a pilot for for NASA and he 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 saw it and if he saw it then it must be true this guy flew Pan Am Airlines for 50 years yeah. oh my god he must be at home and uh, he, you know he's a credit he's a family man he's you know he's a christian man and he is this, 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 and so he must be credible. This guy is, this guy is a judge or a police yeah. officer. He's a surgeon. Why would he lie? But then there no. have been times where there's been multi-sighted UFOs. Now those are the ones that people kind of. There's the ones in New Mexico, wasn't there? When there was yeah. literally dozens of lights in the sky behaving Buenos Aires and um, yeah. the, the, Brazil a lot of them in South America it seems yeah. um, which is amazing it could be government yeah. just testing craft yeah or it could be something else or it could I be just a, love, I just love the idea that it could be something else yeah I think I think that's probably what it is it's flirting with the idea of the surface and wanting to go deep and finding something that we ourselves would like to believe yeah I think maybe we feel as though you know when you when you're watching a film and, and a, an actor comes in and you feel safe with yeah I think we feel safe knowing that there's extraterrestrials out there mm. who could just suddenly help us out at any time or switch you know maybe we feel as though that this planet it can't be in charge you know the people of this planet can't be in charge human race cannot be in charge of this planet mm. we need something else above us to to kind of waggle their finger and come in. And maybe it's for people like us who don't have a God figure. True. To find something else to believe in. Yeah, true, true. You know, that's why I say I, I, I don't believe in a God, but I hate atheists. Because they're the ones who'll take any kind of magic away from you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There, there's, you know, there's... And it's good to have something. I can't believe in a God, but... Well, the thing is, I don't, I don't understand why people personify a God and why they create this... There's pressure for themselves to 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 behave in a certain way, and um, and to justify acts that that uh, negative things in their life by saying it was God's will and this and that and uh, it's it's you know that's that's life that kind of thing and saying mm -hmm. well obviously I I've been cleansed I'm fine I, I've I've murdered four people 
but God says it's okay, so I'm okay now. It's for gay, it's so for I mean, I don't understand that kind of stuff. I mean, I I, be- I like the idea of believing in, in a in a in a, a core uh, that there is there is the that there is a, a higher being that can guide us moralistically to give us guidance to make us stronger to make us nice good good neighbors good people. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, you can't have one without the other. You've got to have the good and the bad. And that's probably why religion, to me, doesn't kind of support my belief system. Because mm. it just, it's just too many relaxed rules yeah. that just kind of suit everybody's uh, need to just kill and rape and pillage and get away with it. It's fun time on Free My Free, guys. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, yay. <laughs> Um, so yeah, go, but, yeah. Go, I went to a lecture. We, uh, we, just, we just lost ten viewers, by the way. <laughs> I went to a. Hi, I, Mom. I watched a lecture. <laughs> um, it was in a library in Abram, right? And it was about UFOs and stuff. Uh huh. And the guy kind of blew my mind a little bit. I'm not sure if it's been disproved yet, but pyramids and geese are sort of following a mathematical equation about how they're angled together and stuff. Yes. The same mathematical equation can be attributed to pyramids in South America. And, and Mexico and it's the same on Stonehenge and the Easter Island so it all fit but not only that if you put the map of the the earth out flat the the same equation hits it's all their positions all their positions globally the same because everyone says it's just tricks of light but you know there's like allegedly pyramids on Mars it's the same equation um, the pyramids on Mars but everyone, it could just be a trick of the light but now this is the thing that blew my mind there's a face on Mars isn't there yes which is just a, it's, they say again it's just a trick of the light he put a mirror image of the half of the face of Mars and it looked like Neolithic man they did a mirror image of the other side and it looked like a lion and the Sphinx is half man half lion <laughs> Do you know what I'm sick and tired of seeing Big Fat Booty. Big Fat Booty? Uh, have you seen it? The, um, no. the, the stupid commercial with the guy walking down with his big ass. Oh, abs. that thing, yeah. Oh, my God. I'm sick and tired of seeing that. Certain things that you want to have. You know, commercials are supposed to be really clever. You know, My dad said that once. Com- uh, commercials on television are so good. You should be writing for those. I'm like, you, you are kidding me. I hope you showed them the Bill Hicks. Oh, if you work for, mind. Yeah, if you work for advertising, kill yourself. David Icke. David Icke, yes, I'm thinking of that freak. David Icke. David Icke, yeah. David Icke believes, very much believes there are among us. And mm. The thing with David Icke as a character, a lot of what he says, I can kind of roll with. It's just when he starts saying that the royal family are reptilian hybrids that mm. I start to think, oh, okay, all right, David. Like yeah. the man, he he sold out Wembley Arena. Yeah, of course he would, and people believe him. Stuff people, I mean, people still enjoy Jeremy Kyle, and he, oh. you know, people go to see these people. People still go to see Dave, Dave, David David. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm thinking of the other D word, um, Derek Akora, and um, oh Derek Akora. Uh, even Fuck. though, even though they are blatantly. Uh, full of shit. Can I tell you a story about David Cora? Uh, who, David? Derek? Derek, <laughs> fuck it, hell. Derek Cora. <laughs> I went, we went watching him, me, me and Mrs. Her and Nas, and um, he walked around the crowd, oh, I can feel him coming around, and he walked behind us, and he was saying something to some woman, and I turned to Tasha, went, what a load of shit. And everyone started laughing. And I wonder why they laughed or looked and my face was on the screen because he was stood behind me. <laughs> and your mouth was like... Uh, yeah, what a load of shit. And everyone just started laughing. And I was like... <laughs> and then everyone just started laughing more because I was like, oh, sh- no. Yeah, it was quite embarrassing. Oh, my God. <laughs> and we were trying to walk out afterwards. I had a, a mix of people going, oh, it was so funny when you said that. And everyone going, I can't believe you said that about Derek. He's so spot on, you know. But 
Yeah, it was funny. People want to believe what they want to believe. And I think that with David Icke, he, uh, yeah, for some reason, you can believe people so far, but when they cross that line into craziness mm. and people are still with them, then, you know, they have no reason, they, there is no reason why these people should have money any way that they should be spending it to go on to, to see that yeah. kind of a junk Cause I've, take he, the money away from them give it to us he spoke a lot about obviously the Illuminati the government yeah. and how we're slaves and how we're the, the money the, the way the mo- we're slaves to this monetary system that doesn't yeah. work in our favour it's alright yeah. it's true yeah. but I don't think the royal family are lizards so I re- but because the X-Files took off so well yes there was a sudden explosion of everyone looking upstairs. Yeah, and I'm very I sorry. I don't mean upstairs, I mean space, and I mean virtually <laughs> yeah. going, I've just watched the X-Files, I'm going to go look in my bedroom upstairs. <laughs> the attic is fascinating. Yeah, yeah. And then again, yeah. So I reckon the biggest explosion would have been Independence Day. Quite possibly, and maybe that film caused that shift in, in how films were actually dealing with the subject matter. Yeah, because I remember um, seeing the first poster for Independence Day at UCI Cinema in Warrington a year before it was going to come out and just a picture of the planet Earth the big ship coming towards Earth was enough to make me I fucking need to see that film that Mm. film was going to be immense it was and it was an immense film and uh, because there's an an abductee in Independence Day isn't it it's Randy Quaid yeah of course yeah he's uh, and, been, uh, um, been abducted numerous times and he gets his own back by and, and then proves proves probes, me about you probes know, the ship yeah yeah probes the ship yeah yeah so that's that's just I hate that bit in the words just, of my my generation up yours and then yeah puts his thing it's not a good line no and I think Randy Quaid is um you know to actually have a humorous character in that film they could have done better than him. Yeah, and he's all right though. You he's know. He, but he's always National Lampoon. Yeah, he's always Christmas Vacation. He's always plugging up the freaking sewers with his but, shit. But like Dean Devlin and um, was it Roland Emmerich? They never use like main actors. No, no, no. Or very rarely, they always use like the like B movie actors at the time. I know Will Smith was obviously a huge thing, but. He wasn't he that was, famous at that That point. film put him on the map, yeah. really, in terms well, of. There was Bad film. Boys just before it, which he did yeah. well, but not obviously in the it wasn't, day, that It That wasn't huge. hyped. Yeah. This was hyped. I mean, Jeff Goldblum was kind of like, he's always been on the fringe of, of indie, and, uh, yeah. you know, he's he's the fly, for heaven's sakes. And, um, yeah, and the, the young kids in the film were, were you know, Lisa Jacob was um, in Mrs. Doubtfire, yeah, and yeah. she was in that one as well, and she never made film again. And uh, it's um, no, no. I think she has. She's, she's done a few things. She actually played Princess Leia in a, in a short film once in in somebody's fantasy um, as Princess Leia. Oh, right. Did that once. Um, it's quite a good little short film. Mm. Um, but yeah, yeah. It was. It kind of just brought about the whole sense of how to film these, uh, how to shoot these films. Do you know they're making a second one? Independence Day two. Yes. Uh, the 5th of July or is it going to happen on Black Friday I think they should do a Black Friday thing and just abduct all those stupid idiots who are running running over to grab a TV set yeah that'll be a, that'll be a best time to, to actually hit that market yeah yeah get rid of them all so forget Independence Day Thanksgiving day after Thanksgiving Black Friday yeah they should just call it Black Friday we'll just, oh, yeah Black Friday that'd be good abductions yeah but yeah what I'm trying to think is what are they going to do with it the day after Turkey what are you going to do with Independence Day 2 though the, the, they invade again um, well, that's the, it yeah I mean is that the, uh, that's probably all they're going to do and um, you know the, the only reason why they're reaching back to it is so that they can make uh, what, what's that stuff that with Albert Abraham Lincoln's face on it oh um, uh, money money thank you come back to the same old thing uh, and that's that's a sad thing I think that any any film that is there to just make money is just not worth and and that's why we're saturated with so many alien abduction films now because they started to make money so we've yeah, got yeah, so yeah. many of them now like the most recent one there's like a few ones there's like Alien Abduction last year I think it was basically or it was just called Abduction I can't remember yeah there's Alien Autopsy yeah. there's, they've got yeah, of course it's transcending all different genres now yeah. the fourth um, kind the fourth yeah the fourth kind was it was 
interesting in the fact that they did they were, you were allegedly seeing the real footage of what happened and then the actors interpretation of the real footage that happened but the real footage is actors and then actors acting what actors have already done yeah it, so it's it, nice it didn't, to see the reconstructed it, it was just strange yeah and i suppose i've never seen that before but there was, again, there was really nothing different. To, we've not really it didn't discussed really, it, but the, yeah. they always have the hypnosis. They always get put under hypnosis and yeah. they, they experience what they've been through throughout hypnosis. Communion did a lot of that, the, yeah. uh, the, the hypnosis thing. Um, and to be honest, there's only so much of watching actors lying down going, oh, 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 I'm convulsing, by the way. This is radio, right. not, a, not a, you know. But I think in the fourth kind of one point, they starts floating. I think he levitates. Yeah, they have to because they, the producer's saying, there's nothing happening in this movie. Make him float. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what... They're, they're watching Dave Letterman and they're playing Will It Float on one of those little game things that they do. Really. <laughs> is, is this stone going to float or is it going to sink? And like, I want you to make something float in this movie. Letterman's doing it. You got to do it. Yeah, come on. Look, think of my bank account. Think of, yeah. So I think that's pressure. And uh, that's the thing. Uh, what, same with Poltergeist. Because I don't think movies. there's ever really been a great... Alien abduction film. I don't. I, I am think totally with you on and that. And I think I'm. I'm still waiting for it. I think we're still going to make it. Yeah, I think we should. Because again, it's everything's going to yeah. be on your face and scary and jumpy and like um, dark skies. Okay, we haven't talked about this yet. This no, is, this is highlighted. Yeah. Now, dark skies. I thought the first time I watched it was okay. Yeah, I've watched it a few times afterwards. It's not. And it's, it's lost its. Because again, what they could have done with it is it being creepy and little things are starting to happen and it's a bit and you let the tension build, but they're not allowed to do that with films anymore. No, no, so no, 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 no. She's got to, she's got to hear something run into a room and all of a sudden you see an alien just over a child and then she screams, switches his light on and it's gone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You've got to have that because we need jump scares now. Yeah, exactly. You need jump scares and accidental jump scares as well. I mean, mm. there, there's a lot of those. Um, in every film, every, everybody has to jump out. A, a main usually you have the two main characters, and there's like an S. They, they get the sense that something is a little bit creepy going on in the house. Yeah, one of them has to do a, a E on the three scare yeah. just for the sake of it. Um, but what I thought was interesting with Dark Skies is yeah. they're out, he, he's out of work. He's trying to find a job. They're really struggling yeah. with money, so that was a pressure. And then things start happening to the kid. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. they're trying to deal with the fact that they've got no money, they can't make ends meet, yeah. and the think the kid's going crazy. Yeah, exactly. And he looks like he's self harming, and everyone thinks that it's the family that's harming the child, but yeah. it's not. He's been abducted. So more, it's it's about the pressure that's building on the family, and that is the one thing that drives this film and makes it interesting. It does, till about halfway through, then Until, all of a sudden, yeah, we don't have to worry about the money anymore. We don't know why he's not. Gonna, he's got a job, but he doesn't seem to have done any work, but. They're not worried about money anymore, and yeah. now they go and see J.K. Simmons, who's this UFO expert. He was good. He's good. He's good in everything. He was, isn't he? I know, but I, I'm I'm just starting to realise he is the new J.T. Walsh. He is the new um, that that the, J. the um, no J.T. Walsh. Yeah, yeah J.T. Walsh. Yeah, yeah. He, he was the 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 guy who has always played despicable characters or characters that you can, but you just can't wait to see what he does. What do you remember him in the Spider-Man film? You barely get a glimpse of him. Oh, what is he shy? We can get a picture of Julia Roberts in a thong. We can certainly get a picture of this weirdo. Put an ad on the front page. Cash money for a picture of Spider-Man. He doesn't want to be famous. And I'll make him infamous. He was the... Um, yeah, 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 yeah. He was just amazing. Yes. And those scenes with him in it were the it, best scenes. It was, like watching, it was like watching the comic book yeah, coming out. He was. He yeah. played that, yeah. And I think he's he is the brand new Hollywood gift. Yeah. Um, they needed him. They, they need him desperately. Mm. Um, to be good in these films, and he is, he's doing well. Yeah, yeah. And like I say he was good in that, but they could have come, it, it was building so well, and that's why the film's such a disappointment, because in the end, it sort, of t- it sort of turns into poltergeist, but with aliens in a house. But most films do that. They 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 do the act three thing where they, the, the writer has, has gone so far as to set the tension up, set the characters up, set the scares up. And uh, and they're either getting pressure to say we need more scares at the beginning, not at the end. And when they get to the end, they they realise that they've already they've already used all their their scare juice, and okay. then they have to go into the extraordinary realm of believability. Mm. Uh, Poltergeist was just like that. Um, I mean, as as soon as as soon as you start seeing 
uh, skeletons and and things that and, and things that that just kind of just come gushing out with huge arms. Yeah, you're not watching a poltergeist movie. No, you know. It's... I've seen the new trailer for the poltergeist movie, the new one. Same thing. Too many, too many. Um, uh, what do you call him? Floating apparitions mm. that are not poltergeists. Well, that was the thing because Poltergeist, I, I like it. It's a, it's a great film. It's a great film. I but love it. it. But, yeah, but it's sh- like oh. you were just saying, it shouldn't Ooh. really be called Poltergeist. Yeah, it's it should mis- be Poltergeist with ghosts and monsters. Yeah, <laughs> subheading. It, There's the, Poltergeist in the beginning. Exactly. I mean, the documentary, the Enfield Poltergeist, is probably the the best thing you can watch. And yeah. I wish that they'd make a film of that, but stick tr- stay true to it. Let's have Channel Four make a film like that, or get Chris Jones, um, who actually has made. A realistic ghost story, urban ghost story, mm. um, about a, a girl. That's who a has really a good film. Have you seen Urban Ghost? Connery story? Sons in it. Yeah, exactly. That it, was a really good film. Those two made a film that was honest and true mm. about an experience of how somebody could who has basically had a near death experience come back and is 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 basically in there. Yeah, um, it's a boyfriend dies, doesn't he? And she, she dies and the boyfriend's coming back. Yeah, and that's it. She, she it, it, and it's, it's one, one it's, of my favorite jump scares in any film is in that. Yeah. You remember when um she I had think a long it, time. I think it might be a cabinet or something where she something takes her anyway, she's got a cabinet against the wall and something takes her attention away. So she looks at something, she looks back the cabinet is just right next to her face. <sighs> And it's done so well. Yeah. God, I jumped. Even the three big styles. Like, Fuck yeah, I'm not expecting that. I'm so glad you've seen that film because, uh, and and you know of the Chris Jones, Gene- uh, I can't remember her name, but they were boyfriend and girlfriend a couple at the time. They're guerrilla filmmakers. Right. They make films without a budget. That was exactly one. That was just one of them. Just show us what you can do. Get a yeah. few cameras. You got the right ideas. Exactly. Exactly, and it, I, and we forgot to mention, you know, when we we reviewed Starry Eyes and the Honeymoon. Yeah, Starry Eyes was actually uh, the one of the our favorite films of those those films that we reviewed. Yeah, yeah. It was made for thirty five thousand uh, dollars, crowd funded, no production, um, and no no actual box office records exist for that film. That's it was incredible. it was it was uh, released for festivals. It was not distributed worldwide. It was a little film made with little money, but its restri- art thrives on restrictions, people, and this is what I keep on saying. Yeah. Um, that it's it's the little money that goes a long way. We should be really good then. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So, Dark Skies, you you were were you okay with that film? To a point. Yeah. I thought the setup was great, and you then like- it just what it just. They had ideas to explore that they just sort of forgot about halfway through. I love the idea that they're struggling with money and they can't make ends meet and all of a sudden things are starting to happen with the kid. It's great. Yeah, but and then the twist at the end being that it's the other kid, not that not yeah. the kid that they thought it was yeah, yeah. that they were interested in. That's okay. Um I was I was the, and the end the kid's just gone, isn't it? Just gone and that's it, yeah. So I, I suppose that's quite a brave ending. You don't get the the typical Hollywood ending where everything turns out rosy. Yeah, the well, they, they, there's a walkie-talkie that starts because they yeah. have that motif of. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good setup. Mm. They kept that setup and they they paid it off at the end, which is very good. So stylistically, maybe a little bit over the top, um, trying to try to do something that they didn't need to do. They mm. could have just pulled it back a little bit, but strong performances still. Kerry Russell did all right. She did, yeah. She's she's just Felicity though. I, I always look at her and think. You know. Who's the husband? I forget the actor's name. Though. I'm not sure. Yeah. I, well, thought, I didn't mind him too I much either. I thought he was the guy from Parenthood, but yeah, no, he not. looked very similar. No, I, I, he's got a face that I, I must have seen many times. I just yeah. can't pinpoint his name, but yeah, I thought everyone in it was good. Yeah, they did a good. They did well with what they had, but they, it just yeah. suffered from producers saying, "We need more. We need more. We need more." We Pressure. Need more. I can smell it. I can yeah. smell that money that, that they needed to burn off, and of course. You can see that they spent millions on that movie. Mm. Not really, but it did really well. Yeah, it did well, and I think it. Uh, when you told me that we, you know, that it was a good idea to to watch this film, just in case we got abducted by aliens, and we actually did a podcast on alien abduction yeah. films, um, I thought it was this old series 
Um, there was an old series called Dark Skies, though, wasn't there? Exactly, and I thought that's what though I thought there was like a TV movie back in 1987 that I'd missed. Oh, I, was, right. I was searching for it, searching for it. Incidentally, I did find um, Extraterrestrial was that other movie that we thought that we wanted to watch. Right. I paid for the wrong version, and I got a, a Spanish film <laughs> from 2011 called Extraterrestrial. Okay. And uh, unfortunately, the version, the copy that I had. Um, it didn't have English subtitles because it actually was Spanish so I had to learn Spanish really quickly and I got as far as the fact that the guys wanted a calculator so that he could calculate how big the UFO was outside his window and then the rest of the film was just a drama about people okay and it, it, it was not you just reminded me of one of my favourite scenes out of Close Encounters <laughs> was the calculator scene no you know <laughs> no, 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 no. when he's um, when he he, he stops mm. uh, at the crossing and he lets that car go by yeah. and he's reading his map such a clever thing yeah and then obviously the car flips but he, that's all brilliant but I love it when it all goes quiet, <coughs> quiet and he looks up you just see this gigantic ship just floating silently in the sky exactly such a great Close moment. Encounters did did the right thing yeah. I think it did everything I mean the, the, the scares were perfectly balanced um, yeah. the uh, the acting was superb the uh, the the production value mm. was epic, yeah. and I use that word because it really was very well. You know, it was very wide, very big yeah. scope. It affected the world, and it was all there. Was... I've said this before, but in um, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, when he goes to see the the rich businessman who wants him to, is it Temple of Doom? It's not Temple of Doom. That I'm thinking of is it? Um... I think it might be Last Crusade. Anyway, he goes into a room and has a massive chandelier in this room, and it oh, looks like the ship out of Close Encounters. Yeah, I don't know if it's that's the model they've used, Ooh, or maybe clever, maybe we'll have to clever. Maybe we'll have to look it up. That's just Spielberg having way too much money and too much time to play with things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, probably he probably got a lot of uh, eager kids to kind of re recreate it for free. You know, yeah. bloody fingernails and stuff. Bloody ugh, poor buggers. So, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I, I I missed an opportunity. I got made redundant from my job um, too early because I was schedule I was scheduled to go to Fargo on my on my third visit to Fargo, right? Um, and I was scheduling a eight hour journey from Fargo to through South Dakota to Devil's Tower. Oh! I actually had a pl journey planned, and I missed out. And Imagine doing a me. podcast from Devil's Tower. Oh man, gotta do that. But it's it's you know it's pretty. There's something about it. One day I will I will be there. Mm. Maybe we'll land there when we finish here. Maybe they'll drop us off. So, in conclusion, then in conclusion, alien abduction films. There hasn't really been a really good one yet. No, we need one. We need a really good one that sort of um, deals with the subject matter correctly. Yeah, or, uh, but subverting the the whole expectations of all the different idioms and tropes that you would come to expect from. It's okay. Uh, I, what's going on? Um, we're back on. That was weird. We just we're right back in the in the garage. That was cats are okay. No, look. Look at the time. Uh, you got here exactly at 10 o'clock. And it's still 10 o'clock. How much time has been... We, we, we've, we've, we've got 1 hour 22 here. Unedited. So we've... We've actually lost... We've, 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 we've gained... We've gained time. Gained time? Whoa. Wow. Well, I, I suppose we better finish it there we'll finish it there I think we've we got to think about what's just happened and no I think we should just go on ahead and just do another podcast okay then well okay oh that was nice yeah it was nice I like that yeah thank you yeah it was good yeah good for you yeah, yeah. Mm. well done you there yeah. you go nice you know I'm, I'm going to take this opportunity to, to let the people know how they can contact our friends at Frame by Frame. They do that podcast. You thing. know those two guys, yeah. They do the podcast, okay? So how they're, they're, they're nice, they're, they're like a forest, which is a beautiful thing. Exactly. And so if you wanna to, to, to do the communicating thing, you know, the social networking 
uh, thing. Yeah, you can yeah. Uh, you can tweet those guys tweet? at Frame by Frame seventy eight. If you'd like to go to the website, that will be www.roastedportions.com. Hey, hey, hey. You don't need to do the www. It's implied that it's going to be the World Wide Web. But people need to know that. Okay, just go to roastedportions.com. Okay. You go down on the right hand side. You've got the social connections. You can you can talk to the people who do the show. You can even talk to uh, uh, the people who made that movie. You know, C A C O three. Who'd want to talk to those mooks? I don't know. They made a pretty interesting movie, right? Yeah. It was in black and white. Yeah, black and white. I yeah, like you know, that. We like black and white because, and there was also some trees in that movie too. Oh, trees! It's like like being in a forest, which is a beautiful thing. Other connections, you can really get to know these people on YouTube as well. And if you want to comment on their on their podcast, I urge you to do that. Okay? Yeah, I think it is a, a proper, really nice thing if people want to start contacting these Subscribe guys. Subscribe to them and, and, and com- comment. I mean, it's just, just polite, you know. Also, you can email them at framebyframe78 at gmail.com. That's it. I think that's everything wrapped up, so... Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna go and plant a tree somewhere. Okay, you go plant some trees. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna go, go plant a tree. I'm gonna go tweet. You tweet, I'll plant a tree. It's us. We're out of here.